Welcome. This video relies on you having seen three previous videos of mine, one on the standard Euclidean algorithm, one on the question of factor trees and whether factor trees are unique, and uh, the Euclidean algorithm and the jug filling problem. So I'm afraid you have to look at those videos first, and then we're going to, now going to address the question, are all factor trees indeed going to get the same list of primes at the end? We can answer it, but we need the key property primes. Here goes. Um, I'm going to start with a puzzle, and just to make sure there's really some question here that's worth exploring. I'm going to ask, could a power of 7 ever equal a power of 17? Well, the answer is yes, if I choose a equals 0 and b equals 0, but let's talk about non-trivial powers. Could a power of 7 equal or ever equal a power of 17? And the answer, well, what is the answer? I'll let you explore it for a while. But what I need to do is address questions like this. What I'm basically saying, can some number n be written as a whole bunch of 7s and at the same time be written as a whole bunch of 17s? Now, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, I guess I'm giving away the answer, says no. That any number can only break into a list of primes in one way. So there's no way a, power of, a product of power of seven, a product of sevens could ever equal a product of seventeens. That's representing the same number two different ways. Let's prove that. Now we need the key property of primes. Now this is only true in our arithmetic system, as you saw in the factor tree um, uh, video. There's actually other number systems out there for which everything I'm about to say fails. But the property of primes that seems to make this work is the following: if a prime like seven ever goes into a product, say uh, x times y, then I claim 7 either goes into x or 7 goes into y. Now I'm using this fun funny notation of college math, I guess it's not used in high school level. It just means that 7 is a factor of x or 7 is a factor of y. So if 7 is a factor of product, that means it must go into one of the individual terms. And people like to believe this. Uh, it's not true in general. For example, 6 does go into 18, which I can think of as 2 times 9, but 6 is not going into 2, and 6 is not going into 9. Oops, I don't need to write that. So this is something key about primes, and most people feel satisfied, well the problem is 6 splits into 2 and 3, yes the 2 part can go into the 2 and the 3 part can go into 9, and they'd argue well the 7 can't split into anything, therefore there's nothing the 7 can split into go into x and y separately, and they think that's a proof. It's actually a little more subtle than that. What I need you to go through is Euclid's brilliance of 300 BC to explain how one can prove that a prime number like 7 has this particular property. It turns out that property is the key to make answer a question like this. In fact, let me just do that right now. Um, for example, if 7 to the 36 happened to equal 17 to the 54, in fact, I know I'm wrong right there, then 7 is a prime that goes into the left-hand side. Well, Euclid's algorithm, Euclid's key property primes here, says that if 7 goes into a product, then 7 must go into one of the individual terms. Well, 7 is going to the left-hand side, but the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So 7 is actually going to this product of 17. 7 goes into 17 times 17 times 17 times 17, 54 times. But by this key property primes, that means 7 goes into one of the individual numbers. Well, all the individual numbers are the same, they're 17. Uh, but 7 doesn't go into 17. That's incorrect, therefore that's incorrect, and therefore the assumption that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side has to be false. There's no way a power of, seven, a product, a, a, a power of 7 can equal a power of 17. That's it. That's basically the proof of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic in our arithmetic system. Uh, for example, just a quick little additional thought. Uh, could 3 times 3 times 5 times 17 times 31 times 41 ever equal 29 times 29 times 117 times, I don't know, something rather. Could one product of primes ever equal a different product of primes? Same sort of argument, no. Pick a prime, say 29. 29 goes to the right-hand side. Well, if the right-hand side equals the left-hand side, then 29 goes to the left-hand side. By this key property of primes, if, seven, if 29 goes into a product, it mis must go into one of the individual numbers. Well, it doesn't go into 3, doesn't go into 3, doesn't go into 5, doesn't go into 17, doesn't go into 31, doesn't go into 41. Therefore, this equality can't happen. Two different products of primes cannot equal the same amount in the end. All right, let's prove the key property of primes. All right, let's clear my space here. It's going to take a little bit of work. As you can see from this green sprawly writing, the full details actually do appear in the book, um, volume one of my series. It's available on the website. Um, what I'm going to go through is probably a bit too fast, but let's see what happens. All right, I'm going to change notation a little bit. Suppose 7 goes into product A times B. And let's see what happens. Suppose 7 isn't going into A. 
we want to prove then that we're forced to say that 7 goes into b. Here goes. Let's look at this. S starting with 7 doesn't go into a. If 7 goes into a, there's nothing for us to prove, so this is the interesting part. Now, what are the factors of 7? 7 has factors 1 and 7. What are the factors of a? 1 and all sorts of stuff. But not 7, because 7 is not going into a. So, the greatest common factor, greatest common divisor of a and 7, can only be, well, it's either 7 or 1, but 8, 7 must be 1. Now, if you look at the jug filling problem, that means we can write 1 as a combination of the original two numbers, x times a plus y times 7. Interesting. So there's a little equation for us to play with. Well, we're trying to get at 7 must go into b, and the trouble is I don't see any b's in this equation. And after a couple of days, weeks of mulling on clever things to do, a flash of insight might occur to one, it certainly occurred to Euclid, to multiply everything in this equation through by b. So that tells me that b would have to equal x times a times b plus 7 times y times b. OK. Well, this part, 7 suddenly goes into this. This is a multiple of 7. There it is. But this, too, is a multiple of 7. Why? Because it has a times b in it. And our starting assumption was that 7 goes into a times b. a times b is a multiple of 7. So this, so this right-hand side is a multiple of 7 plus a multiple of 7. This is a multiple of 7. That is, we've done it. 7 must be going into b. So, there we have it. If 7 goes into product a times b, if 7 happens to go into a, grand. If it doesn't go into a, then we're forced to say that 7 goes into b. So either way, 7 going to a times b forces us to either say that 7 is into a, or 7 goes into b. That's the key property of primes. And notice there's nothing special about the number 7 in the work I just did. Any prime has this property. There's only two factors, a 1 and itself. In which case, if p, a prime, isn't going to a number a, the greatest common factor can only be 1. And off we go. The same argument applies. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely beautiful. There's the fundamental theorem of arithmetic proved for our arithmetic system. Fabulous. Thank you.